Today we will be looking at one more spatial interpolation method, which is called Kriging. Like many of the other interpolation methods we saw in the previous lesson, it is a weighted average method. But it is a little more sophisticated in how it tries to account for the spatial correlation in a dataset. For instance, if we look at inverse distance weighting, we can define a power parameter that tells us how quickly the weight of a nearby sample point decreases as we move farther from it. But the method doesn't give us a way to objectively define this parameter based on the characteristics of our dataset. Kriging is different because it actually creates a model of spatial correlation that tells us the proper weights we can use depending on the distance between the interpolated point and all of the other sample points. For this, Kriging relies on what is called the variogram. The variogram expresses the difference in the value of a random variable between sample points at different distances. So, in this function, we start with a sample point x, and we consider the value of the random variable z at this location, which in the context of our course could be the elevation at the point x. Then, we consider a point x plus h, where h is a vector between x and a different sample point z of x plus h is the elevation at this sample point. So, the right side of the equation expresses the difference between the elevations of two points which are separated by h. The square comes from the definition of the variance, which you can see in the handout. We see h again in the left side of the equation, and the gamma of h is the variogram function. If we do this calculation using every possible pair of sample points in a dataset, or maybe with a subset if that is too slow, we end up with something like this, which is called a variogram cloud. In this plot, the x-axis is the distance between a pair of sample points, and the y-axis is the variogram function. Here, we can already see some typical characteristics of a variogram cloud. Since nearby sample points tend to have similar values, the dissimilarity tends to increase as the distance between sample points increases. However, the pattern in the variogram cloud is still not very clear. So the next step is to create bins that define distance intervals, and then we compute the average dissimilarity in each bin. We normally do this up to about half the size of the region covered by the dataset. The end result looks something like this, and is called the experimental variogram. In it, we can already see a clearer pattern for how the average dissimilarity between points increases, as the distance between them also grows. So, the next step is to fit the pattern in the experimental variogram with a theoretical variogram function. In the handout we look at three of these, exponential, Gaussian and spherical, but there are actually many more. There are ways to do this automatically, but for the purposes of this course we will assume that this will be done manually by looking at different functions and defining the value of some parameters. The typical parameters are three, and they are called the seal, the nugget and the range. The seal is the value of the maximum dissimilarity between points. The nugget is the value of the dissimilarity of points at the same location, so when it is not zero the data is usually noisy or the resolution of the dataset is low. Finally, the range is the value of the minimum distance before you reach the seal, after which the dissimilarity tends to flatten out. So, now we can use the fitted theoretical variogram function to perform ordinary Kriging. Like in other spatial interpolation methods, if we want to interpolate the value at a given point, which is here marked as x0, we typically use a search radius around it. Another common option to limit the search is to get a given number of its nearest neighbors, such as 10. In this radius we will find some other points, which are marked here as x1 to x5. And we will use the distance between the interpolated point and each of the other sample points to determine the proper weights to use by inputting this distance in the theoretical variogram function. So, if we look at the system of equations for ordinary creaking, we can put all the distance values. Here, x0 is the interpolated point, x1 to xn are the sample points within its search radius, and w1 to wn are the weights that we give to the value of points x1 to xn. If we look at the three big matrices here, a, w, and d, the weight matrix is the unknown one that we need to calculate. So, we solve for w by passing the a matrix to the right side and inverting it. Finally, there are some computational aspects that you need to take into account if you use Kriging. Matrices W and D here are just vectors, but matrix A is square, and it can be very big if you use a large search radius. Since inverting a matrix is computationally expensive and this has to be done once for every interpolated point, Kriging can be much slower than other interpolation methods.
So try to use a relatively small search radius, but this radius should still always contain other sample points.